Uh, so my name is Daniel. A number of uh, I'm happy that a number of people that I know are on the chat are on the call tonight. Um, <clears throat> so a little about me: I am actually not in the geospatial world uh, anymore. I used to be in GIS. That's how I learned about OpenStreetMap, and um, I'm actually on my way to uh, become a PA. So it's a different change of uh, different different career trajectory. But why I'm so interested in this topic, walking and biking, is because I attended a, a couple um, organized events with a group called Beta NYC here in New York. Uh, so they're very active promoting data, uh, open data for you know government transparency, things like that. And one of the things that we connected on was that I happen to be really interested in OpenStreetMap, the platform, and their th whole thing was just making this data more available to to people for better government. So we found um, a happy, happy uh, energy and we're able to produce, you know, really get a lot of uh, these sidewalks and crossings and this infrastructure map that I'm really proud of that. So. And ever, ever since, I'm going to actually talk about this in my presentation. So, why don't I just share my screen and we'll get started? Is that, is that good? All right. Let me. Sorry, I tend to ramble. Okay. All right. So, here we go. So, my presentation is going to be very short, uh, it's going to be a little informal but I hope it gives you some idea into what's been going on in New York. All right, so here's an overview of the last uh, two or so years. Um, so here's, here's where I've been involved with the OpenStreetMap uh, community in New York, uh, primarily in the pedestrian and bicycling uh, sense. So uh, Leona, I'm happy that you're on here. Um, I wanted to give a special shout out to uh, our work earlier. So uh, Casina Synergy is the first bullet here. Uh, it's a group that promotes um, stewardship in a park in Queens. Um, they do a lot of great work with uh, this velodrome and the park, and they're getting a, they have a lot of community involvement. So my goal with them is to really see how OpenStreetMap and their work can come together. Uh, the next thing I have here is um, the mobility mapathons with Beta NYC. Um, then COVID, the virtual mapping uh, session, and then the most recent, the social distant uh, scavenger hunt. Okay, and uh, Maggie you might recall this image on the top right. Uh, I think you helped make it for me. It's one one of our virtual events, uh, mapping uh, sidewalks in Staten Island. So just going to start uh, with the, probably the earliest thing in. In evolving uh, sidewalks and crossings and that such. Uh, so with the Casino group, we did a lot of mapping and uh, more like micro mapping in the Casino Park. Uh, you see on the left over here, a lot of these ways, these red lines over here, these were previously already mapped. But uh, some of these more um, these trails over here that are kind of running through the this different colored area. It's kind of like a grassy, um, shrubby area. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these trails here are actually very precise, uh, precise like wayfinding um, desire lines. These aren't like official trails, but these have been mapped by some very uh, community-oriented. Very, very people very familiar with this area. They were able to map, and you can see the people walking here. And as a matter of fact, once we finished uh, really mapping out the Villadrome, we did a tour of the park. The students from the Casino Energy and other community members. We walked around the park, walked around the lake, uh, mapping things like benches, um, where areas were lit, uh, any staircases that weren't mapped correctly. And so what you're seeing here on the left is a really uh, well-mapped, uh, very thoroughly, all the details are there. Now on the right, uh, you can see uh, one of the CUNY campuses, uh, Queens Community College. This here is, 
is another interesting uh, project that another one of uh, the students from Casina Synergy and I were involved in. Um, so what you have here is a number of these points of interest. You have these emergency phones, benches, uh, some stop signs here are mapped, and some bicycle parking. So again, this is one of those things where we went this time with field papers, actually both times were field papers, and we went around, we mapped um, pretty much every single trail on the college campus. So before this, I don't have a before and after, unfortunately, um, but it just goes to show you how, how much detail can go into this when you, you hammer it out. Okay, so moving along. Uh, so now I mentioned earlier the Beta NYC experience. So this connection between me and uh, New York City government was an effort to uh, really highlight areas where there was uh, uh, not very, the mobility, there were challenges in mobility for the people who lived in these districts. Uh, so the first uh, five that we did, I have them here. It's, uh, you have a community in the Bronx uh, by the Long Island Sound, Soundview, Jamaica Center, uh, you have Staten Island, uh, Inwood in Manhattan, if you're familiar, and then Coney Island, Brooklyn. So these percentages uh, could be a little out of date as of yet. They were as of two days ago when I made this. Uh, but this is really the progress that we've made since. Um, the day of our, our Beta NYC Mapathon, we targeted areas that were low income, uh, least pedestrian and ADA accessible. and it's been, uh, I don't have a picture for you. It's, it's If you've been to the, ta the tasking manager, it, it's just amazing how much uh, some of these projects have really gotten, how much progress we've made. Um, okay, and just wanna emphasize, I, I know that one of the, uh, one of our guests had mentioned that there is a cons there's an issue with consensus on how we're mapping this. Uh, I wanna, let you know that that consensus has not been reached. Um, there is still a, a very alive today debate on how we're doing this. Um, I was in, introduced to sidewalk mapping uh, via mapping as separate ways. I know that there is an interest in mapping the the actual roadbed with an attribute, uh, like sidewalk equals yes or right or left, but I've been mapping and encouraging others to map as separate ways, uh, primarily because the curb information where the crossing and the sidewalk intersect. Okay, so uh, fast forward to now COVID. Uh, we had a couple events. Um, two that I'll highlight are the, the one from the beginning, the Staten Island over here, and uh, the one that Ariel was mentioning earlier, the Flushing Queens. So. I'm involved with a number of street safety organizations here in Queens, and we targeted, uh, when I started this, I wanted to highlight the pedestrian situation where there was uh, current interest. So the downtown Flushing area, um, Northern Boulevard, Utopia Parkway, and the Casino Park uh, region, because there are a number of projects that happening in that area. And I'm happy to say that we actually reached, uh, if I'm not mistaken, almost 100%, if not 100% validation. And then lastly, uh, our great socially distant bicycle parking scavenger hunt uh, as part of the Open Data Week. Uh, again, another beta NYC activity. And here we used field papers again to find uh, where the city wrecks, uh, which, which, so these are the New York City Department of Transportation's, uh, this is their uh, their version of a bike rack. They call it the city rack. And we wanted to go ahead and, and find out where they were and if the, uh, the data that was there is correct because as you see here, it was imported um, a couple of years ago. Uh, so now, what is that, 11 years ago? Um, 11 or more years ago. So it's been a while and a lot of these points have really need to be cleaned up. So what we did here, and here's some of our, our members now at the bottom, we did field papers, uh, we walked around, we biked around. Uh, we actually covered a lot of ground. Um, I think we started from West 20th Street all the way down to Canal Street and from 
the Hudson River to the East River. So it was it was quite a large area. Um, but uh, the feedback that we got from that event was generally very positive. And I think people, there is an interest in doing this kind of uh, mapping in the future. And I think that uh, since a lot of our participants came from Brooklyn, we did this, we did a trial in Manhattan. We're going to try this in other communities uh, probably this summer just to see how it works, see what the uh, turnout's going to be like. But I'm excited to try it again and get that going. And if you're not familiar already, here's just a, a link uh, to a service, uh, PsychoOSM, excuse me. And i just show you quickly. How are we doing on time? Am I going a little too over? Okay. Right. So I want to just highlight a lot of the F, the stuff that we did. Um, you can see on this service called Cyclo OSM. Uh, these blue dots represent um, all these different bike parking nodes. So what we were able to accomplish, you can see here, 5, 2, 2, 2, 12. Uh, all these different numbers represent the capacity. Um, but because not all of this has been verified, uh, it's really hard to um, look at this with as as a really reliable data source. Um, there's a lot of problems with these points as, of, as they are today, but we're hoping that the more we do these um, scavenger hunts, the more we do these uh, checks on the data, the more reliable this will be for the, for the community. Okay, so lastly, uh, so what is, what's the next step? So if, if you're interested in what we have, we've done so far, there's ways you can get involved. As I said, we are gonna, likely have another scavenger hunt uh, this summer. Um, I've been really checking out the bicycle network analysis for uh, from people for bikes. <clears throat> the people who work, run this is the bicycle advocacy organization and also holding more task manager related sidewalk mapping. So that, cause that seems to have, um, there seems to be a large interest in people doing that. All right. And uh, that is that. So uh, my name is Dean Alamang. I'm uh, coming in here from Columbus, Ohio. And a couple of years ago, we had a hackathon in conjunction with the Smart City effort that uh, we got quite a big grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation a couple of years ago. And uh, a lot of the folks involved in the hackathon felt like they wanted to do something continuing after that. And we had a, a number of meetings, and um, it was kind of difficult to rustle up the volunteers to do open source projects and figure out what to do. And some of the folks who were more active got a bit burnt out. And um, I made the suggestion a couple of years ago, well, look, one of the things we keep talking about is sidewalk mapping. And the nice thing about sidewalk mapping is you don't need a strong technical background to do it. Now, none of us had any background in this at all. And I said, well, why don't we just contact these folks? And one of them was Nick's group, and another one was uh, the other group at University of Washington. And they had these very similar names. Uh, I'm actually getting ahead of my slides here. So starting in autumn 2019, we started holding mapping parties. So we would actually get together, order some pizza. And so we'd, uh, the, the first one I'd volunteered to do at my home, but uh, very quickly some of the local tech companies stepped up to offer more professional venues. And I offered to buy all the pizza, but again, you know, the, or the, all the people who wanted to see it happen pitched in. So uh, I was able to look like a, an altruist without actually contributing anything. We did a, whole, a number of in-person meetings well, once a month for about half a year. And then of course, COVID-19 happened. And we had a, this, this really big party planned. One of our uh, members is actually a professional caterer and he was starting up a business that tech meetings don't have to just have pizza. And he had this whole jackfruit sliders and then COVID came by and we canceled it all, uh, which is a real shame. Um, but in any case, um, we uh, started off using a thing called Project Sidewalk, and then there's the Open Sidewalk Project, which is confusing because these names are so similar. And for the longest time, we found ourselves very confused about which one we were talking about. But um, 
we uh, got uh, got started with the uh, project sidewalk, which for the most part is uh, mapping out obstacles to sidewalks rather than the sidewalks themselves. And then about, oh, I don't know, was it four or five months ago, uh, we uh, hooked up with the open sidewalk folks and started to basically train all of our folks to do that as well. And so now we uh, have these... Um, meetings where we well we sort of alternate what's the focus and we're getting uh, guest uh, speakers from well Nick has come to our meetings a number of times as have the uh, project sidewalk folks and so uh, we now have a, 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 a small core of folks who come all the time and then a bunch of folks who will show up uh, when when they can the way the project sidewalk works is it uses Google map images um, it's really good in the in-person sessions because you often find yourself wanting to discuss, let's look at this this funny thing, how should I mark that up? And you can get a bit of a consensus about how to mark them up. Uh, one of the real drawbacks of it uh, is that the Google Map images are often woefully out of date. You'd be walking down a street and seeing things you recognize recently and suddenly your images go back as much as 10 years and a building that you were looking at vanishes. You know, and it's just it, So the... Uh, uh, accuracy and currency of the data is really in question. Uh, but, it's a, but it's actually a lot of fun, and we got a lot of folks who had very little or uh, developing technical skills being able to contribute this. But just like one of the speakers earlier, one of the things we're trying to figure out is how to go about using this data. And a bit of a statistic here, here's a map um, of uh, part of Columbus and some statistics. So the Project Sidewalk folks have put into their system a handful of neighborhoods around Columbus, and here are the statistics they gave us. We've audited 124 miles of streets. There's 184 miles of streets in the neighborhoods that we have um, earmarked for our first work, so we're actually 67% of the way done. However, if, if there's 2,600 miles of streets in Columbus. It's a big Midwestern city. It sprawls. We don't have any geography around us. There's no hills, no bodies of water. So cities like Columbus just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're actually only about 5% of the way through. But yeah, we're doing this for the large part just uh, for the, the sake of community and uh, you know, doing something together. Uh, with Open Sidewalk, we just started this recently in the last couple of months. This is the one that I think a lot of people on this call are familiar with this. Uh, we're also experimenting with some mobile apps to do some of the mapping. And we don't have any statistics on this because we haven't been doing it uh, for, for long enough. And so a couple of the things we've done to use this is a project that another one of the hackathon teams uh, built that they call Columbus Helper, and that's a mobile app that helps citizens find city services. And just like um, like Daniel was talking about, to, uh, or somebody was, I think it was Daniel, about finding parts of the city where the people who live there um, have less mobility and less access, often to the sort of city services that are exactly earmarked for lower income people or uh, families that have a small number of incomes and a lot of uh, people in the family. And these are the, the folks who need mobility the most and often the ones that live in the parts of the town that have it the least. So the city helper was intended to help them find their way to food banks, to uh, transit systems and so on. There's also a bicycle safety app that uh, has been using a lot of the smart city data from Columbus and we're looking at how we might integrate this with them. And so we're interested in some of the questions that one of the uh, attendees brought up at the beginning about how do we bring this sort of data together. There's also a group called Vision Zero, which uh, the, in many cities, an advocacy group that tries to improve traffic policy in a number of cities, including Columbus, and we're trying to figure out how our data might be able to help them with some of their analyses. So uh, we've been doing this remotely since COVID began, so just over a year. And if you come to our meetup, we actually do have people from the West Coast who join us well, relatively re regularly, you know, given that they're on the, the West Coast, and since they're remote meetups, uh, you can join in. We're actually going to have our first um, in-person meetup later on this month. So if you come to uh, that meetup uh, group, the <clears throat> one that's going to happen in two weeks' time is going to be at the Center of Science and Industry. We're going to use their Wi-Fi in an outdoor space that, uh, that they have, and we'll also have it online so that people who prefer to stay at home or are remote will be able to join us. So um, that's what we're up to here at Columbus, and um, I'll turn it back over to Jess uh, to carry on the program.
All right, so um, hi everyone, I'm Lena. I'm a third year civil engineering major at the University of Virginia and um, hope to become a transportation planner after I graduate. So um, I'm really interested in um, multimodal transportation, you know, biking, walking, transit. Um, so this space is really interesting to me, um, but I haven't had too much too much experience with OpenStreetMap so far. Um, I've only I only just started mapping buildings last semester and then sidewalks um, this semester, um, but I'm hoping to learn a lot more from all of this. Um, so just to get started, um, I'm with the Code for Charlottesville, so we're a, um, a chapter of Code for America, similar to Beta NYC and Open Columbus. Um, we're a volunteer group of coders, designers, um, data analysts, um, you know, you name it. And we work with local nonprofits and governmental agencies on, on uh, projects. Um, and the club is also very new to OpenStreetMap. Um, this is one of our very first projects with it. Um, I think it's really cool uh, hearing from Daniel and Dean um, because I actually met uh, Nick at open, the, one of the Open Columbus um, maps to help set up one of our projects and Z from Beta NYC. So um, our work is really uh, built on others um, and it's really cool to collaborate um, with all these people. So um, the problem that we're trying to solve is to create a pedestrian routing for people with limited mobility. So um, as you can see on the image on the right, um, you have uh, pedestrian routing or uh, walking directions um, for how to get from my dorm to one of the libraries on campus. And um, you can see that uh, it takes about 15 minutes, you know, but what you can't see is that there are stairs in the way. And if you're a person in a wheelchair, um, you can't use either of these routes because there are stairs in, in both of these routes. So you would have to um, figure out your own routing and think about not only just the steepness, you know, uphill, downhill, um, and but also if uh, there are any obstructions in the sidewalk, um, how wide is it, and if there are any curb cuts. So you, many of you are probably aware of the Access Map um, website. It gives you routing directions based on the steepness. Um, so we're trying to build something similar to this. Um, it gives you, uh, sorry, yeah. Um, so we're um, trying to build something similar to this um, and we're hoping to not only uh, create a service for people with wheelchairs, but also hopefully people with uh, low, uh, low vision or um, blind users. So um, as we said, we're pretty new to this. So we're just starting with the basics. Um, we have two projects set up, one with uh, crosswalks and curbs. Um, and once we have, uh, have all of those mapped, it'll make sidewalk mapping much easier because um, all you have to do is just connect the, uh, you know, one corner of the intersection to another. Um, and in the future, we're going to add in the slopes of the sidewalk, um, the types of curbs, if it's raised or lowered, um, and what uh, the uh, tac um, if there's a tactile pavement at the uh, intersection. And we've kind of already made some progress with open route service, um, but we need to work on that more. So that's all I have.